I'm a living example of you can get punched in the face and get back up because I'm the modern day Aztec warrior. <laughs> I'm escaping the brain, go straight for the cake. I'm a take to the bank, now taking a break. I'm made for the race, I pray for the day. I wake with a bake in the greatest state. Hey, no. Are you living in a box? I'm bigger than a box. I'm spitting to supply my bread. My vision on the top is living like a boss when I kick it in a nice white jet. I'm cooking with the bars, I'm wishing with a one, yeah, I'm dipping to the bar, I guess. I'm switching like a bra when I spit it in song. My mission is to try my best. Taking a stab, but I came with a bad, I'll be chasing to grab my goals. If you hate in the back and you ain't with the facts, don't be faking and act like bros. <laughs> Welcome to your favorite part of Tuesday MMA Underground. I'm one half the dynamic duo of Buddy B. Killing it with the one and only. Sam K. And man, we got two phenomenal guests in the building tonight. All the way from Street Beef's Scrapyard. We have the OG ref himself, the Anomaly, as well as heavyweight boxer, El Guanaco. How y'all doing, man? Doing great. Thanks for having us on. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but we actually, uh, we just got a message, man. Uh, it seems like we have an unexpected guest with uh, some unexpected news. Oh, fire chicken. Surprise, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, what's up, man? How you guys doing? How's everybody tonight? Oh, yeah, good. Doing great. Good evening, man. What uh? What is it that you have for us tonight, man? It sounds like we have a premiere going on or something. I just wanted to say thank you to um, Jay for uh, directing me to to Rumble in celebration of my third ban on TikTok. Uh, I'm gonna be putting all my stuff onto onto Rumble now. Uh, a completely different platform, but yeah. Anyway, that's what I was doing backstage while you guys were. We're getting ready and, and everything. So um, we do have a surprise today. We have a surprise involving you and me and Samaritan. Okay, okay. Yeah, for those who didn't know, man, we uh, we made our way out to the scrapyard uh, back on the 23rd, and we, uh, we had a nice boxing match. Yes, sir. So... Let me give some context to the fight first. Um, so you came out, you signed up. Um, I didn't, I didn't, uh, it was kind of my bad because I didn't do any matchups ahead of time on this event. I just had so much, I had some other bullshit going on and I'm not going to get into it, but it was eating up a lot of my time and sanity. So fight day, I just kind of, you know, um, I just kind of, I just kind of winged it. Roll off the shoulders. Yeah, I winged it. That's my chicken term, I guess. So, um, I, I had some, I had some boxers, but they were like straight up boxers from from down in L.A. Those were potentials, but a guy showed up, Samaritan, and he mentioned to me, he's like, "Oh man, if I wasn't, if I wasn't two hundred pounds, you know, I would box Tom K." And I was like, "Well, you guys are the perfect matchup." And then I went and said something to you about it. He's like, or some case like, well, I'll box him. And I was like, oh, there we go. So <laughs> That's a spirit. nobody can say anything about the weight difference because sometimes it, it, it really doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, it, it, I, I think skill wise, you guys, you guys were a perfect matchup and I would like to see a rematch. Um, when, when he's, you know, 160 and, and uh, and all that, but, um, yeah, I think it was a. I, I was happy with the match for the most part. Yeah, we uh, we spoke, man, a little bit after uh, the fight, after the event, and um, <clears throat> you know, we we actually uh, spoke about a rematch. Uh, I wasn't really interested in it, to be honest, uh, just because of the results and uh, uh, 
But, you know, thinking about it, uh, the only thing that would kind of uh, make it, I guess, interesting is if, if for one, he came in conditioned, and then two, if he came in and was willing to do Muay Thai, uh, you know, that would be something I would consider maybe next year or so. Uh, but uh, not really on the boxing tip. Really, like I told him, I told him personally, I said, bro, I, all I was looking forward to after the fight was a, a conversation, a good conversation and a, and a good, uh, you know, puff puff sesh, you know. Yeah. That's that's all I was looking forward to, but um, that that time will come for sure. Yeah, I think if you guys uh, kind of met in the middle, whether it was Muay Thai or or even just regular kickboxing, I, I would love to see both you guys' kicks involved uh, in a fight. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't see that. <laughs> so whenever you guys are ready. What? Man, speaking of seeing something, I gotta see something right now, man. We're waiting. I'm like, we ain't gotta act hard. Sasquatch back, y'all. We flipping like a flash car. Guns down, gloves up, a shut up. That part. Guns down, gloves up, a shut up. That part. Here we go again. It's a trend. Psalm K. Out here from the West Coast. Time to make history. Samaritan. Back again. Rest in peace, Jay Gotham. Shout out the Scrapyard family. Happy to be back, let's get it. What's going on everybody? Fire Chicken here back at the Scrapyard. We've got a boxing match ready to go down. It's pouring down rain today. Lots of good matchups so far. And we got some travel going on. We got Sam K from the West Coast coming all the way up. Debut in the Scrapyard. Honored to have you here, man. And we got a returning Samaritan stepping back in here, do some boxing. Shout out to the sponsors, Pichotto Premium Clothing Brand, HKA USA, and SasquatchTheLegend.com, all of which can be accessed below in the description. Guys, be safe and fight hard. Okay, boxing match. We went over the rules before. Do you have any questions? No. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Touch gloves if you'd like to your corners. Be patient. Fight, are you ready? Fight, are you ready? Yes, sir. Scrap. All right, Samaritan. First round. First round. There you go. Ooh, ooh. That's good, all right, just take, like that. Take angles, man. That's easy. Samke agreed to let his opponent continue despite the 10 count. It was counted as a knockdown. Scrap! Hook to the body, hook to the head. Let's go, boys! Let's go! 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 Let's go!
Keep your head up. He's doing shit because he's tired. One, two, is down the pipe. Yeah, it's heads down. Grab hook. There you go. Yeah. It's open, bodies. Keep it clean. Bodies. Body. Come on, power. Stuck to the body. Shit. Whoa. Oh, 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 the body. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Body. Break. Clean. Break. To the bodies. Break. Double jab. Double jab. Double jab. Double jab. Double jab. There you go. Double jab. Double jab. There you go. Right there. Right there. There you go. Let's go. There you 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 go. That's it. That's the fight. Okay, your winner, TKO. Great match, guys. Great match. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to Samaritan. He didn't have to take the fight. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate being out here in the scrapyard. It's been, it's been everything, man. Fire chicken, I appreciate you, bro. Coach P, I appreciate you. And yeah, back on that plane. Nice. <laughs> What'd you think, Sam K? Uh, great edit, man. Great, great edit as always, man. Uh, had me on the edge of the seat, like I, like I, like I wasn't me out there. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that was a nice spot. I like that. I saw a call. So I watched the live feed, and there's a couple of those shots Samaritan got. I did not see on the live feed, but I saw it on the edit. And there was some, there was some good shots. So, yeah. So, Two of those, if they landed, I don't know. Those will be lights out. Those are crazy counters. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, unfortunately, bro, I, I really didn't like my performance, man. I was, uh, I was really wild. I was not technical and sharp like I, like I would have liked to been, like I could have been. Um, it looked like you had plenty of cardio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know the sad part is, um, <clears throat> the the thing is, uh, I was trying to make up. Uh, I was trying to make up with power what I lacked in weight. And, you know, he had the weight advantage. So in my mind, exactly, I had to throw with bad intention, even if it was something that wasn't going to land. And uh, I wasted a lot of energy in that first round. And uh, that's why you saw in the second round, there were good, there was twice where I said, you know what? All I got to do is walk forward, catch my breath. You know, I've already lost a lot of energy. I simply need to walk forward, catch my breath. That's it. And, and when I did that, you know, we saw the, the puke come out. So, yeah. 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 It's something when you got somebody on their heels. If you got somebody backing up, it makes them way more tired than if you're walking pressure. forward. Pressure. Yeah. Yep. 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 Drain somebody's gas tank is putting that pressure on them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The thing is, is, is just I, I wanted to feel, you know, I wanted to win off of a punch that I threw specifically. You know, I wanted the I wanted the second round body punch TKO, not the second round, you know, throw up TKO. You know, well, that, it came from the body punches, though. It actually came from the body punches. It looked like maybe well, that was the cardio. I think uh, might have been a factor. <laughs> I, I, I think I think the the conditioning or lack of the yeah. conditioning or lack of, and then um, uh, maybe the maybe the punches, but I think more so just the the pressure, the psychological pressure. Uh, 
you know, on top of the, the lack of conditioning, you know? Yeah. So thank you, Chile. Appreciate you, man. A lot of people bringing up the bucket and me yelling for it, but here's the thing guys. Like I don't, if I can avoid, we have a bucket outside the cage. If I can avoid vomit in the cage, then that saves us a lot of cleanup because there's MMA matches that are going to happen right after that. You know, like I don't want anybody rolling around even, even if we do clean it up really good, you know, like just knowing that it's there, people would probably like try to avoid that certain spot. And, and so, yeah, it's like, get the damn bucket. Hurry up. You might have fighters to say, oh, look at the time. Oh, I've got to be going now. I don't think, you know, I'm not going to be able to make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he was gonna he was gonna feel the same way whether he puked in the cage or outside the cage. So, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that was a good. That was a fun fight to watch. I'm glad I got to watch. I was sitting here at the edge of my faces. I was like, <laughs> so that one's gonna go out tomorrow on on my channel. Um, I also got another one coming out tomorrow. That uh, this is something that I don't want to tell anybody what it is, but I, I have released one of these before. And I was going through some of my old footage and I'm going to do another one, but it's something interesting. Um, it's something interesting. It's a, it's an older fight, but it's a, uh, it's something that you've never seen before. So all I can say is I don't know what time it'll premiere tomorrow. Or I'll probably just drop it. it. Probably won't be a premiere. I don't know. It's I, I'm kind of weird on that stuff, but it's just going to be something new and, and different that, to the channel. And I do got a lot of these laying around that I can throw up every once in a while and and i might i might make more of them if they pick up some success so that's awesome. a, really vague but i'm also trying to hype it up enough to get you guys to to tune in and watch it so oh yeah drop the exclusive <laughs> uh, -oh. Got me hooked, brother. <laughs> uh ghost um you guys want me to drop it right after this i, I mean i can it, it's nothing like Okay, how about that? I'll make the promise to you guys after MMA Underground's over. What time does the show usually end? Uh, about about eight eight ten. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about I how about I do this? How about I give you guys the link to it right now, and Ooh. anybody that's watching this right now can watch it. Fire. <laughs> but. Fire. You know, I don't want to like take time away from MMA Underground, but this is it, guys. Yeah. This is the this is it. Um, the link to it. So it, it's unlisted right now on my on my YouTube channel, but I'm letting you guys for tuning in it, watch it. So much um, respect. If anybody wants to watch it and let me know how it is on the show, I mean that's cool. I will tell you guys this. Nah, I'm not going to tell you that because it'll give away what it is. But I'm trying to like hype it up. At the same yeah. Time. So, so, so I'm okay. Like, let's let's hear your experience with the scrapyard. Like, because we we had you on kicking it with chicken the night before, but we didn't really get a chance to hear about your experience meeting people and in the cage and 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 all that stuff. So. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I'm gonna keep it brief so we can get to our guests. But uh, it was it was a great experience, man. Uh, truly, truly a great experience. Um, it's, it's exactly what I thought it would be. Uh, the the vibe was great. The, the community, the fellowship. Uh, you know, a lot of people give them shit, but I specifically asked for lights out to be my corner man, and he did his job. He did his job to a T. Uh, in my opinion, he said exactly what he needed to say to me, and um, shout out to Lights Out. Lights uh, out. Oh, fights were great. You know what I mean. Uh, the uh, the energy was great. Uh, the 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 overall aesthetic, man. You know, uh, it was beautiful driving in, driving out, flying in, flying out. Um, you know, and the the overall hospitality, you know, unmatched, man unmatched so uh i just wish i had more time to you know check out the food check out you know the sites but uh you know that'll be next trip you know i'm i'm really glad you made it up um i've always wanted you to make it up make it up here for for um you know hang out at the scrapyard and, and i'm glad you did so yeah um 
yeah i mean if anybody asks you know it's a it's a positive review right <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely man. absolutely man uh i got to meet you know a lot of people that uh you know that i'm personally a fan of you know uh ron i've been uh i've been a fan of you for a while man i think uh you know you handle yourself very well as a rep and uh and then when I found out you were a fighter, I was like, oh, shit, you know what I mean? You know, because you're a dope ass fighter, you know, and then um, Guanaco, I didn't know who you were. Uh, I'm sorry, but bro, you made a hell of an impression. That's why I reached out to you for the show. Like, you know, even if I wouldn't have ref that fight, you know, like I was impressed, bro. Uh, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man. You know, he fought in, in Scarface's yard once. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was like 2020, I think. I made the trip out there. I drove like four hours for it. You know, now that you say that, you look you look that much more familiar. Like I might have saw that fight and not known. Bang. There. Under the same name? Yeah. Yeah. Who who'd you fight so we could all uh, look it up? Uh Bang. Bang? Okay. Bane or Bang? Bang. Batman bang? No, no, no. Bang bang. Bang bang. Like bang, bang. bang. <laughs> <laughs> got you, got you, got you. Okay, definitely looking that up, man. Well, no need. I got it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Fire chicken on the quick lead. Uh oh, uh oh. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I rewatched it again before the show. Yeah, that's just, you gotta watch it. I won't even say anything about it, but well, I might ask about it later. We'll see. Yeah, go watch the fight. <laughs> Not right now. You have to stay tuned to the show. You can't Absolutely. leave the show yet. Absolutely. <laughs> the very minimum, keep two browser tabs open at the same time. There you go. And that was well, that was your first fight in the in Street Beefs ever, Guanaco? That was my first fight in Street Beefs. Like it was right after the pandemic gym started to open back up. Uh but my coach was like, Hey, let's go to Street Beefs. Like we were fans for a while and it was, let's get a fight in street beefs and i was like do it and joined the facebook group and then uh that first fight and then yeah and were you living out in washington or in virginia like where were you so I was living in new york at the time oh wow okay okay yeah. and uh two years ago about out here to washington gotcha I before I came here too, it was crazy because I was looking up all the scrapyard stuff before I came up, and like then seeing everything in person, it was incredible. And then now being yeah. a part of the scrapyard, like it's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, everything comes in a full circle. It's all meant to be. <laughs> what was uh, your training background? Background like? Uh, so I actually started doing Muay Thai. That was my first martial art. Uh, that for like two years and then uh, a boxing coach came to the gym and I just wasn't getting I had one smoker and I wanted more fights and he was like who's ready to fight me and he's like alright but we're going to do boxing so I was like alright and then fully transitioned to boxing like six months training in that and then had my first amateur boxing fight um, and then did the street beefs uh in the Satan's backyard and then came out here. So uh. this is a good question from King Cal. Uh a lot of people tend to think this. Um there's just a lot more people. It's they had like eighty fights I think the day I was there. So <laughs> man and everyone has their egos there yeah so it's definitely it feels like a little bit more of a environment the, the amount of people and the amount of people that are there yeah yeah you know who doesn't have an ego though wrong tell me why he's one of the nicest guys ever but he kicks the most ass i've ever seen i'm like <laughs> <Holy shit. laughs> like <laughs> I got okay. I'm curious. I'm genuinely curious. When you train, Ron, you train what you know. Like you still learn because every time I've ever heard you talk to someone, you're teaching. 
everybody. So I'm like, like I'm just like, yeah. There's still more stuff for you to learn. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, man. I learned stuff. I learned some some new tricks today. Actually, I I've been doing two a days since I got back from my road trip because I got to get my cardio back. Like I said, when I got back from a road trip, I was 214. Now I'm 202. But uh, yeah, the, and, and I helped. Well, I was going to have a three a day today, but uh, I wanted to be on the show. So I came out and, and did this. So uh, yeah, I had um, BJJ at lunch. And then uh, a friend came over for some boxing. And man, that's, I, I, you know, just holding mitts and mimicking an opponent is, is, Almost as much as uh, being the one that's throwing the punches, especially when you're doing it for multiple people sometimes. You know, it's because, you know, especially we did 10 rounds and next week we're going to be doing 12. Then I'm going to try to get them up to 15, 20 rounds. And then uh, that way his cardio will not be questionable at all. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you eat for lunch today? Some BJJ. What about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask, man, um, you know, we, we see you're a great ref. We see you're a great fighter. Uh, but one thing I noticed, man, uh, when you're when you're in someone's corner, uh, it's like you're you, you're, you're like the, the coach right there. Uh, are you into coaching? And uh, if so, can you talk about that? Well, yeah, I, I started uh, boxing. I, I was thinking of it today and I had to go back and try to figure out when I really started in a boxing gym and it was 87 and um, I got my butt handed to me by a boxer in a kickboxing match and I asked him say hey brother what do you train you know and then he told me that and after that I never lost you know I, I started training there and got pretty good at it got pretty fast hands I got to train with a WBO welterweight champ I got trained with a um, high-ranked uh, middleweight contender and man it was I was just a blessing you know and and then when I went back and I got so tired of waiting for they they said no more kickboxing and you're gonna have to do a pro boxing match now and and I waited and waited for over a year and nothing came to fruition so I went back in the military and and I thought well I'll box for the army and they and I knocked a few people out not, not intentionally you know it's just um they right. didn't, they don't guard or they don't slip and, and they get caught you know so and then um the um, then they asked me, you know, asked me if I had a record, and I told them, you know, and, and they said, oh, okay, uh, you can't box for the Army. So I had to uh, <laughs> start coaching then, and I've been coaching ever since. So it's been 30 plus years wow. I've been coaching. And um, we took all European championship when I was coaching in, in Stuttgart. And um, yeah, so I kind of believe in what I do, you know, as far as I, I get, get people on it. And I've done the same thing as far as I, I like to catch, make, make my fighters catch their breath, you know, I'll hold, support their arms, tell them lean on me so their lungs will open up. Yeah. Take a few breaths because you can't hear anything if you're gasping for air, you know, you, you don't listen to anything. Try to get their breath back and then start coaching them. And just a few little corrections a lot of times and let it go. <laughs> yeah, Give man, it, it really shows on – uh, it really shows on tape, you know, uh, the, the coaching, you know, really shows. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah. I, I kind of like it. You know, I kind of, uh, it's kind of living vicariously. It keeps mama happy that I'm not in there doing it, you know, because <laughs> um, I don't know. I told her when I, when I went out to do my MMA match, you know, I was, my coach says, uh, I'll, I'll coach you if, if your wife says it's okay. And I said, ah, oh, she doesn't care. And I went in to say, yeah, yeah, Joy thinks that you care if I go do an MMA match. And she goes, I do, but you're going to do it anyway. <laughs> so that was, you know, it was fun, though. Yeah, pandemic's actually what got me in there because um, there was no more jujitsu tournaments and I had the itch. That's, I, that's crazy. I remember seeing that fight, too, like during that time. It was one of the oh, first yeah. fights that I saw. It was your yeah. like, wow, it's crazy. It was fun, yeah. The guy actually came back and, and started training here once a week and uh, won his next boxing match. <laughs> that was Rabbit, remember? 
I, I watched it's okay. I couldn't remember who he was boxing, but I did watch the MMA match that you had against him when you were right on top. So he started, oh, I don't want to get too much yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've been under big guys. I don't want to be under big guys. So I, I, I make sure and stay on top. You know, that's <laughs> uh, the only thing. And then you had a, uh, I know you had a match with a Sifu Panda, and then you trained with the Terrifier, I think, too, before, right? Oh yeah, I um, he came over to the house. He's he's a great guy, man. He, uh, I, uh, we're we're pretty good That's friends. Good you know, I talked to him a lot. Saw him, I saw his beautiful little baby the other day, and I said, "Yeah, I must take after his mom." <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's he's a good dude, man. Um, he's tra he's actually come out and he's training at our gym now in our in Hammerhead. But uh, yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, that's always fun. So I'll yeah. just say, I know you guys both fought, and then Fire Trail, you fought a little amateur too, right? Me? There, I had to unmute it. Um, yes, I did. I fought, um, a lot of people don't know this, but I actually had a boxing match when I was nine years old. Um, I, I wasn't really trained boxing. You know, like, I just got in there. I was supposed to box my brother, but they wouldn't let us box each other. So I got my ass handed to me by a kid from the uh, local reservation. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I did MMA for, for a number of years. I didn't have a lot of matches, but I, I went three and one. I lost my uh, title fight. That was the last one I did. Um, and then, uh, what else? Uh, I did some BJJ matches too, like kind of in between the MMA fights. Um, then just the boxing with street beefs and the, and the BJJ. I did, I've probably done like 30 plus BJJ matches at street beef so far. Only. <laughs> I wish I would have got one in with you, man. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get back working out. Just what Ron was saying about staying, working out and in shape, it keeps those old injuries from coming back. And I've kind of been lacking because I don't, I don't really have a reason, but uh, I, I just got to make myself do it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then I was gonna ask uh, Guanaco when you had that fight with the comedian, you knocked him down that fast. Have you ever knocked any opponent down or any fight like street fight, amateur fight, anything? Have you ever knocked anyone down that quick? No, it was like that was the first time it ever happened. I did not think I really had to do that. So when it happened, I, like it almost shocked me. I was like, oh shit, he dropped like. And then, I was, like, I was, like, let him get back. Be if I did it once, I could probably do it. So just be yeah. patient. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't even try to do that stuff. It just happens, I guess, right? I mean, True. you just throw and it lands and down they go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you throw some stiff ones. And that's why I saw as soon as he, he got, he got, he got rocked first. He got reset real quick, got back up, and he was ready to go. Then, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was that was a fun fight to watch though. It was good. No, it was fun to be in for sure. And you're on a, a winning streak too, right? Yeah, I in street beefs uh four four stoppages. Ooh, nice. Yeah. yeah. You uh you actually fought recently uh at the event that uh that I was at. Can we uh talk about that fight? Yeah, let's do it. Uh <clears throat> I definitely, it was weird. It was a weird day. I was supposed to fight someone else for a title earlier in the day. Mm. My mindset was, I just, I was ready for the fight for the belt that day. I wanted to fight for the belt. My opponent, the one that I ended up fighting, Island Punch, great guy. Uh, we talked a little bit after, but he didn't want to fight. He didn't feel like he had the cardio to go five rounds if needed. So I just, I wanted to fight in the future, so. We took the three rounds, uh, and then you were actually refing. It was exciting for sure. I had to put it on for you, and you were, had to give you a good performance. Can, uh, I, can I throw out there that Ron knows Island Punch on a more personal level? <laughs> we found this yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, Island Punch was my mail carrier a few months back before he ever came out to Street Beefs. He said, hey, and he, he recognized me, and he says, you're the ref, aren't you? And I, said, and I told him, man, you know, I've had fights out there, and then he said he wanted to sign up, and I said, yeah, brother, come on out. <laughs> yeah. 
Damn, you ran a recruitment too? Damn. Recruit this mailman. Come on. That's awesome. Yeah. That's dope. Um, there was I saw some controversy in uh, in the fight with the the stop you the AK gave me in the first round. Yeah, I like that at all. Let me speak on that real quick, man. Uh, you know, for me, uh, coming in, uh, coming in, uh, to the scrapyard for the first time, uh, as well as refing not too long after fighting. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was in a certain zone, you know, and, um, I didn't quite know, I didn't know who you were as a fighter, you know, so I couldn't really gauge how tough or composed or how, you know, sometimes when you know a fighter, you know, you know, what their recovery rate is, how tough they are, you know, and what their reactions are. Um, I instantly saw, I saw something in your eye and I made the move, you know, but you recovered, you recovered right as I'm stepping in and counting. And for me, it was like, I already started my count. I see you're here. I'm aware you didn't actually need it, but it's like, I got to continue, you know, what I've, what I've started, you know? And I mean, I had no issue. Uh, I didn't feel like I needed it per se, but, um, I definitely see like uh, why like you stepped in and it, it was a hard shot. Say it one more time. We had some spray paint. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, I was. It was a hard shot, so like it did like stun me, but like I definitely got hit with a hard shot. I was like, okay, I need a. If I got hit with probably another like, two, we could have changed, but. I definitely agree. Stepping in, like you didn't know, like you said, the recovery time it would take for me. So I mean, uh, I had no issue with it when it happened. I just was hoping that my eyes did not look like dazed at all because I didn't, I felt that, you know you feel fine you might not be displaying that. So I was just hoping I was looked okay enough for you to let me continue. Oh, for sure. Like it was a split second. You know, it was a split second, and then you were right back. You know what I mean? Uh, I think what it was is just my feet were just really quick. You know, I saw your eye and I, whoop, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. That's what you got to do as a ref, though. You got to take care of people, you know, because yeah. you yeah. never know. It could have been somebody else and they might have been a little wobbly after. So you just got to, it's better to err on the side of safety, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's always better to be safe. That was a fun man. Island punch, man. He was so whoa. That's all like, damn. Yeah. He was eating good. He didn't get those weights. <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, the oh, what's up, love? I have you know. this curious anomaly. Oh, no, what's up? No, I was just gonna say, like, as the as the fight progressed, you could see, you know, I could see uh, exactly where uh, Guanaco was at. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, this this guy can definitely he can stay within the fire. You know what I mean? And yeah, Wanako's well, a beast, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it became pretty obvious, you know. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. We got some beasts in there, and people don't discount it a lot. It seems like yeah. you know, they think yeah. they you know they type they do their little keyboard warrior stuff, but you know they <laughs> they're not going to come out. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I wish. No, so I was, gonna, uh, I was gonna ask you, Ron. I'm really curious. Do you like refing or uh, cornering more? It doesn't matter. I I would I, personally, I'd rather ref than corner somebody that I haven't worked with. I, I'd rather corner somebody that I've worked with. If I'm on the corner, I like to know that they know what I'm talking about. When I say eyes, I, you know, they should know that I'm talking about quit looking in somebody's eyes. You know. Only thing you look in their eyes say, "Oh, you've got beautiful eyes." No, you, no, you don't. You don't want to look at their eyes, man, because that's you get tunnel vision, you know. And then hands, you know, get your hands up, you know. It's just some simple stuff. And the more they train with me, the more they know what I'm talking about, and, and it makes my job a way uh, just a lot easier if they know, you know, all my jargon. Um, 
Yeah. If that makes any sense. But riffing, riffing is fun, you know. Only thing about riffing is that really, I, it's like um, when I come back from deployment and you know, and, and I'm cussing or something, you know, and I, and I had little girls and stuff, I'd bite my tongue. And then riffing's kind of like that because I see somebody miss a move or miss something, and I, and I want to say it, you know, out loud and say, "Oh man, you could get this on there, you could do that," you know. And, and I, you can't say anything when you're riffing. You just gotta roll with it. And 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 uh, I'm trying to middle. Uh, Get middle telepathy to them if I can. <laughs> no, get that a lot with really the camera work. <laughs> I get that a lot with the camera work too, Ron. I'm behind the yeah. camera and I see guys doing stuff, and it's like I can't, but I can't even say anything over in the corner to them. I can't say nothing because I have to be yeah. completely like unbiased, neutral. Exactly, you got to stay neutral. But you, yeah. you just want to shout it out loud. It seems like my brain is shouting it. <laughs> Dang. I've been there that's, for sure. That's the hardest part. That's a hard. That's probably the hardest part for me. Because other than that, you know, I I see somebody getting in trouble. I'm going to give them a standing eight. You know, I, like I said, and and I I'd rather be safe than sorry. You know, I, I don't want anybody to get hurt out there. Because it's nice to have them come back and have a good time. Yeah. See, and for the, a quick fun story, Nomaly actually taught me a move one time, and I used that move to win a BJJ match one time. When he taught me with somebody with the left arm, and then you have to pull. I don't want to get too much away, but I might pull it on somebody watching in the fight, comment and watch. You know, <laughs> like if you're around 155, I might be coming to fight time. You know, I got the itch coming up soon. Oh, <laughs> like Ron was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I actually got a, I got a question for uh, both of our guests. Um, how did you two guys get involved in the scrapyard? Uh, so for me, I think I don't even re remember if I like how group or if I contacted Fire Chicken or not. But I just remember the the first time I went out there, I really didn't know what to expect because uh, the only street like fight I had was in the OG branch. And so like that, I don't know, has, have any of you ever been there to the OG branch? Oh, yeah. yeah, I've yeah. been there like 18, 2020, uh, one. I fought four times there. So there, I kind of expected it to be just like in someone's backyard or something like that but it was like a whole lot so i didn't really know what to expect when i came out here to the scrap and it was just i was new to washington so like the trees some could probably attest to this like bro deep the tree go and it's yeah kind of art like sasquatch's backyard it's pretty crazy he's really out there he is. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> at first the first time i fought over at street beefs it was in the backyard it was the original OG yeah. OG yard. I'm I think it was cool that I got a chance to fight there because that was what I grew up watching, you know, before before the branch got started and everything. So I gotta meet some cool stars out there, Italian Tyson, a bunch of people. Italian Tyson, that's crazy, yeah. Beast. Um but yeah, no, the yeah, I, I can't really remember exactly how that happened, but just coming out to the yard was definitely something I wanted to do moving out and I'm just glad I got to do it and just went for it. Well, we're glad to have you, Doug. It's good to have some killers in there, big guys. <laughs> I have fun watching you guys throw, throw bombs. <laughs> How did Buddy V find out about the scrapyard? Yeah. Who, Buddy V? Yeah, yeah. Buddy V. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. Warrior. <laughs> I was watching Street Beast for a while, and I was actually uh, talking about going out to the OG branch soon. But being a bartender, I mostly worked weekends. I was like, it was so hard to try to get a weekend off. And I was like, to fly out, fly back. I know I'd have to have a full weekend. And I was like the main guy. So I was like, they couldn't justify it. I was like, shit, if only there was something closer. And I remember, like, someone, my, uh, my, my, one of my uncles told me about, like, the day before the event. He's like, oh, there's a Street Beats event happening. I was like, wait, what? And the very next day, I saw Street Beats Scrapyard on Facebook. I joined it, and the fights started coming out. I was like, no way. So I signed up, and I went to go fight on the second event. And I was like, I had to go. I had to go. And uh, 
I mean, I will say, going from when I was at the OG yard and kind of to the Eagles, when I went to the scrap, I was expecting that. And luckily, it wasn't like that at all. I went ready to mad dog some people and, you know, go chest puffed out. And everyone's just like, what's up? How's it going? Everyone's just, hey, everyone's just, hey how's it going? Kind of mind their own business talking. Like, okay, all right. I could dig this. All right. Yeah, so welcoming. And I was my friend. And it was in the dirt. That was what I remember. Oh, it was the dirt ring, too. Yeah, dude. That we, was so much fun. That's one of the best things <laughs> we have, man, is, is you after your fight, just covered uh, in dirt. You know, when you had, yeah. <laughs> The little that string, <laughs> the noodle, the noodle ropes, the noodle ring. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was, how, that's how, I found how far out. we've come. Yep. Well, you found out how I got it. Uh, basically, I touched on it because there was no more jujitsu tournaments. They COVID dried it all up, and he said I got the itch, so I I got in contact with Sunshine. Well, actually. I was trying to figure out how to get out to uh, Virginia to do one out there. And then Sunshine Trask got a hold of me and says, hey, you know, there's one in Gig Harbor. And I go, what? No way. So that I started watching the videos. I go, oh, yeah, I got to do this. And um, when I got out there, they were uh, getting ready to put a cage together. So I volunteered to help. I, I just knew I wanted to be part of it somehow or another. So I helped. And I thought I pissed Steve off for, for life because I <laughs> – we were doing something, raising the, the tarp up and or, or the the turf. turf. Yeah. And um and he said, Can you pass me that chain? So I slung it under there and, and the the end of the chain hit him on the knee and almost took him out. <laughs> so now you, you didn't Oh my really, god, this is my last you really I didn't. thought it was my last time out there. <laughs> no. It hurt, but that, yeah. that wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna ban you for it. Yeah. <laughs> You said, what about me? <laughs> Chainsaw chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was watching my back all the time. You know, make sure he wasn't following me home and stuff. You know? <laughs> might not have, I still might not have got over it, man. So keep watching your back. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. have, have you guys ever done a BJJ match, you and Anomaly? We've we've rolled around. I don't want to I, I don't want to do one against him. I it's <laughs> I mean Come on, man. I don't want to make him look bad. No, I'm just kidding. No. No, actually, <laughs> the times that we've rolled, he, Ron is like a legit purple belt. And I mean, he, he rightfully he rightfully has that belt title. And I could say for sure. Yeah, he's he's uh yeah. <laughs> Thanks, brother. More than I deserve. <laughs> So with that, man, how did you get into uh, the whole refing scene? Um, hey. were you you were fighting or refing first? Oh well, actually, uh, oh, time I was um, when I was coaching boxing, you know, almost everywhere I coached boxing, you have to have the mediator, you know, because some of the emotions run high sometimes when people start tagging each other with leather. I mean, not everybody, but there's some that the emotions get up there, you know, so. Uh, so it's nice to be a mediator when you're coaching. You got guys sparring each other and they get a little out of hand. Well, you got to, somebody's got to break it up, you know, and you don't want anybody to get hurt, you know. And I had a 140 pound guy that uh, basically just beat the crap out of a 220 pound, 20 plus pound SF guy, a uh, special forces guy. And because he wanted, and he, he just lit him up like a Christmas tree. Speed. I, I tell you, man, with boxing, if you got speed, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, you're just going to be able to move around, be a ghost, don't get touched, and tag them up. I mean, he didn't really hurt him much when he was punching him, but, yeah, he was tagging him pretty, pretty regularly. It adds up. It all adds up, though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's a point game. <laughs> you see, it's just a brutal game of tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, I always tell people when I'm about to fight, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing some makeup put on with someone else's fist, so I want to go see what I get this time. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boxing heck yeah. All right. Uh, man, Bonaco, do you think that we uh we have a title fight in your future, man? I'm kind of curious. Hey, real quick, uh guys, I gotta go. I gotta go pick my kid up. Um cool. thank you for, ha for having me on the show. Um it's been an honor. Um Glad you like the edit. Thank you Man. for coming out and doing the fight. 
Buddy V, I hope to see you guys. I hope to see most of you on the 21st. I don't think I'll see Psalm K, but, uh, you yeah. know, dress up. <laughs> you do an awesome job, Steve. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Appreciate your time. Great fucking edit. And you have a good night, bro. Peace out, guys. Later. Well, what a time frame to leave. I was just going to say that's a question to ask. Fire chicken. I'll answer some questions for him. Got one? <laughs> I want to belt. I was thinking about even dropping weight to go down to fight for a belt, but I'm comfortable up here, so I would like to stay here. But I mean, hey, I maybe go for a Muay Thai belt. Ooh, awesome you train belt. Muay Thai? You, are you pretty regular at training at it? Or? I haven't trained in a couple of years, but like I, I mean, I throw kicks around every once in a while. I practice my knees and stuff, clinch work, but nothing yeah. too. Ooh. I would definitely have a full training camp in Muay Thai yeah. before, like taking that yeah that's that, people don't understand that um every discipline requires a different cardio yeah. i mean they think because they have cardio and one thing that it transfers to the other but it never does you know it you if you don't have cardio in boxing uh then uh, i mean if you got cardio in boxing that doesn't mean you're going to be having any cardio and grappling if you got cardio and grappling doesn't mean you're going to have cardio and kickboxing or tie you know so it's just a whole different thing that Muay Thai belt is open, isn't it? Uh, actually, no. I think somebody has it, unless they relinquished it pretty I'm recently. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Street Bender won it. He was the first person with it, and then Street Bender has retired. He came, oh. to, he came back to West Coast, got a belt, and then retired. Oh, then yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Didn't he take one from the OG yard? I think I think he he went out there and uh I'm not sure if he went out there or not. I know he I fought. Know. He, I believe he fought Ryu Sinan out there with you guys, right? Oh no, 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 no. He fought Ryu out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went to OG Yard and fought Ryu. That okay? That's where, oh yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they met in the middle and had a boxing match. Yeah. Okay. But not it's, for it's fun. There's so many fights. It's fun. It's not that you get mixed up. You're like, wait a minute. That was this one. That was at this time. You know. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, could we ever see Guanaco or Anomaly at another branch fighting? I went out uh, and uh, I tried to get one out at um, um, Virginia, and that didn't come to fruition. Nobody wanted to fight me, so so uh, Fair Play stepped in there, and we pretty much had a hard spar. It, it was pretty fun. Fair Play. They they put it on. On their channel, and I think, ah, <laughs> you know, I wasn't throwing hard because I had a messed up right wrist at the time, and in, and in fair play, it broken his hand. So we were just, it was just you know, we're just having a good time. Ryan, that's not a fair fight, man. Uh, nah, that's a good fight. Me, me and Crazy Muay Thai. Uh, I like that one. He's a, he's a respectable fighter, but uh. Now nah, we we need more than Mr. Mud and shout out to Mr. Mud. He's a he's an OG himself, but yeah, I think uh, Anomaly would need someone top top tier. Yeah. Honestly, when I look at Anomaly, I, I think I think of West Coast WA. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, WA Wade Adams, but uh, he's he's our uh, he's our senior or our masters division champ, and. Uh, yeah, you guys kind of have the same thing where you, you, you guys, regardless to age, you're just badasses. You know? <laughs> nice guys who hurt people. <laughs> oh, yeah. WA is nice as shit, too. Yeah. yeah. That, would be a good fight. that would be a damn good fight. Like on your resume, what's one of your special talents? I can hurt people. <laughs> <laughs> but jujitsu uh, is the art of folding clothes with people in them. <laughs> oh, <baby. laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> i was gonna say uh Bonaco, is there anyone specific you think you might want to try to take on i know you got a couple good competitors uh i heard brick house was supposed to be coming back Ooh. he said yeah. that he 
boxing. He wanted to fight for the belt, but he's been kind of MIA for a little bit. But I heard his name, and that that would be exciting. I think Brick that'd be a good one. Yeah, that'd be a nice one. Yeah, yeah that would be. I like that. That's I like Where, Brick Hunt's little bro? bit of story, like between his fights. You can see the. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Monaco, where are you at? Where are you out of, brother? Where, where are you hanging your head at? Kirkland. Kirk. Oh, wow. That's right. I remember. I think you told me that before. Yeah. 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 I have my garage gym, uh, Juanita Beach Boxing, right now. I'm doing yeah. like uh, basically trying to train with everybody and teach people like private sessions and stuff like that right now. Yeah. What we got going over here? Good stuff. Yeah, you really, that's when you really start learning stuff is when you teach, I guess. You, man, because you start finding out mistakes that you're making, you know, a lot of times it's 100%. teaching really helps a lot. Yeah, yes, sir. Just started coaching recently, too. So, uh, Dynamic Duran, I saw he was on your Fighters to Watch, Buddy V. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, he's three. I got keep- I keep, I gotta keep my eyes open. You never know. You never know. Maybe I want to pull up one day. <laughs> if you keep talking, you might be fucking weird. No, he's talking about hell? bringing smoke. The the <laughs> comments are bringing smoke. <laughs> and I am gonna be fighting. I fought like two months ago. It wasn't the outcome I wanted. It was cool though. Um, I definitely have been training a little more and. Yeah, I'm trying to fight again, you know, around January, start of the new year, maybe Christmas, a little gift to myself, come out. And, you know, I got to show my kids, you know, I got I to gotta have bragging rights when I go to the school and I drop my kids off. I talk to the parents, I walk by, I'm like, yeah, I got a fight coming on, looking extra swole when I'm walking by. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think um, Luther, or LJ, uh, the chair fires pretty much, <laughs> he's trying to go, um, Eventually, he wants to go pro. I think he's he's a man. He he just went to a amateur event at, um, and um, just dominating the crap out of this guy, and then he slipped up and got caught. But uh, man, he's still a beast. So we uh, we're working on stuff for him, you know, help him get there because he's a monster, man. He he's going to be on one of the big shows. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. A lot of talent in that guy. Yes, sir. Yeah. A lot of. Yeah, anybody that can just hoist somebody three hundred plus pounds and body slam them. There's something. <laughs> there's something there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when oh, I, I wanted to ask, uh, sorry, buddy, you go ahead. Oh, uh, I was gonna ask. Uh, What's the end goal look like for you, uh, fight wise? Uh, what do you mean, like what I'm trying to? Yeah, like, well, what is what is like the the? Wh- where does it end for you? You know, are we trying to just get the belt? Are we trying to go amateur pro? You know, BKFC. I'm trying to go um, as far as I can go, and BKFC is kind of like the route that I would like to go. Okay. I mean, like, uh, I don't know. It kind of fits my style. I just, I like to, uh, I don't know. It, it's barbaric enough for me. Like, I really. <laughs> it's wide open, brother. You, you got a shot, I'm sure. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, like, I don't know. Traditional boxing, I really enjoy that. But, like, I love the barbaricness of MMA. And I think I like the striking style of MMA a lot. And I try to use that in my boxing. Um, and BKFC, it's just knuckles, and you could fit those little shots in there, and it's brutal. I definitely would love to basically get to there. That's the goal. Now you, that's that's in, in BKFC. You really have to know how to slip there because just just you're not going to be able to cover. No. There's no way to cover in that. So you need to know how to mm-hmm. slip, slip and footwork. Yes, sir. Yeah, Have you, there is the most recent one you see with a Breton Hart, um, Joy Beltran's wife. Yeah. She she had a good fight. Her, and her opponent went like they went the distance, full five rounds. But her opponent, like, oh my goodness, like her whole knots, the whole side of her face busted. I think she had part of her jaw was busted down here where they broke it. She was talking to her face like that was by far. I think she was one of the top like 
worst. Oh, it was bad. I was like, geez. What's up, Keith Gar? <laughs> In the house. Now, into like uh, coaching and stuff. I also like. I, I'm pretty self aware of like if this fighting thing could go as far as I want it to. And I just want to like uh, be able to coach as well, like along the way and then after as well, for sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's I'm awesome, crazy. bro. I'm going to do some bare knuckle MMA. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, that's what UFC was in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the older... I yeah. see. Yeah, I watch some of the old stuff, and they're doing so. Yeah, I see one or two of those dick punches too. I'm like, oh, but come on, ref. <laughs> Kumate. Yeah. yeah. And you, do you have a ground game there, Guanaco, or, or only do you do any MMA like, stuff or Muay Thai and uh, boxing? That's it. Okay, so you do the throws, the the clinch throws and stuff, clinch sweeps. Yeah, I can do sweeps and stuff. Yeah, nice. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, that'd be. I would love to watch you in a Muay Thai fight. I actually, would. I, it'd be. Yeah. It'd be an honor just to watch that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I w- I want to do that. I want to get the boxing bell, maybe defend it for a little bit. But I definitely want to yeah. fight in the yard for sure. I want to yeah. show that game because I I like took pride in that for a long time and that was where I wanted to go with like Muay Thai. I love Muay Thai. I still watch it all the time. Just boxing oh, yeah. kind of, and I just kind of went with it. So I would definitely love to go back to do some Muay Thai. You watch one championship a lot or. Yeah. One championship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tiger is yeah. another one. Lion yeah. Fight. Yeah. Uh, would you, did you see the Oleg fight uh, or uh, uh, super leg? Versus um, um, ah, the the monster. I can't think of his name now. (laughs) Super leg versus. You know who I'm talking about? Oh, Uh, Rotang. Rotang. Yeah, Rotang. Yeah, did you see that one? Really good fight. I I think uh, Rotang got robbed personally. You know, I I don't know. It was, it was it was close it was close but I still think uh, Rotting did enough to edge him out. Did you see the split on his forehead from that cut? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. On um uh, on super leg, you mean here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. An L- you know, right. super leg looked like he got beat up bad, you know, and, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to check that one out. But yeah. see, this is the time where I gotta be the bearer of bad news. I gotta be the bad guy because we're getting close to our time here. Yes, sir. So before we say you know, we, we even try to think about letting anybody go. We need some final thoughts. We need any shout outs that you guys have and any social medias that we could find you at if you want to be followed as that is. Yeah, for sure. Uh Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, just follow Juanita Beach Boxing on Instagram. It's my uh, boxing gym that I'm just trying to start up out here. Uh, Dynamic Duran, my fighter right now, he's 3-0 and in the scrapyard. He's going to be doing big things for sure. Hopefully we can get a belt on him soon as well. Um, yeah, just keep supporting the scrapyard. Uh, and that's really it. Thank you, guys. Oh, you think? What you anomaly? Any shout outs on again? Yeah, Hammerhead MMA. You know, I still train out there. I got a bunch. It's like a family out, kind of like street beats in you know, a scrapyard out there. It's just a bunch of people I get along with, and have a good time with, and you know, learn, get better, and and um, yeah. And hopefully I'm going to try to get my YouTube channel going again, maybe put some boxing tutorials on there and some and some submission escapes and stuff, because that's one of the things I like is being able to escape. If you can escape something, you can uh, you're not afraid to mount some any kind of an attack. Ooh, OK. Yeah, it's pretty much hey, it. We appreciate you guys. We appreciate your time. And uh, mm-hmm. man, great conversation. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having us on. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Have a good night, you guys. <laughs> Scrap yours. <laughs> man, hell yeah. That was fun as shit. Absolutely, man. Always. Now, you guys know you can't go anywhere quite yet. We should have a quick little, short little break. Hello guys, Bushido Zed here with Street Beast West Coast. Make sure you check out OTH, okay, magazine. They've got uh, YouTube, uh, website I believe, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they have Cuzzo, checking out reactions, it's, it's awesome. We have a lot of bangers. Check out OTH, you guys, thank you. Yo, free smoke with you guys, man. I just want to give a shout out to uh, Overtime Hustling Magazine, man. Go cop the uh, edition, man. Go cop the edition, the latest cover, man. They put me on a few covers ago. Go get yours right now, man. And shout out Cuzzo, man. We'll see you with the reactions. <laughs> Love you, dog. Much love. Over time, hustle. Let's go. With KT here, make sure you check out OTH Magazine, man. They got all the hits in here. They're going to tell you everything you need to know about everybody on the underground. All right? <laughs> Buddy, these fighters to watch. All right. Now, Scrapyard is always where we start because it's the home. You know how it goes. So that's uh, this fighter named Louie. Now, when this fight started, I'm not going to lie. I kind of gave it to his opponent a little bit, looked a little more crisp. You know, you can't always judge it at the beginning of the fight because Louis came out and he had just as much skill as his opponent. And not only that, he started to show that he came to play. He wasn't there for a quick little race. He was there for a marathon. He, went, he was ready to go to war. And you'll see it. If you go and watch that fight through the whole thing, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So from the scrapyard, I got Louis. All the way over from Street Beast West Coast, Samurai Mac. That's right. Now, this guy, I got to say, I already enjoyed his first fight when he uh, came out. But then when I saw his second fight, this man really came to do a number. He came to do business, take names, and kick some ass. And he definitely did. So if he's already came out and did this much in two fights, come on, man, let's go. Because I know there be lots of people that are always signing up. Let's start beating them. <laughs> and number three, from the OG yard, his name is Big Bird. This one actually got my attention. So I was watching through a couple fights, you know, checking like I do. And then I see this one that with Big Bird, a big weight difference. This is like one of the first things I was like, okay, he's going to talk and I, we'll see how it goes. Nope, he held his own and then some. I like the skill. He had a little flair and he had this confidence to where he had a little swagger to his fight style. So I was like, I was actually kind of impressed. I was like, all right. And after the fight, he was a complete respectful fighter going up to his opponent. And I was like, I need to see more of this dude because I'm like, all right, you want to fight someone like that? Come on, let's go. So I know there's a couple fighters in the OG branch right now around his weight. That would be a good match. So, yeah, those are my three fighters to watch. Great picks, man. Great picks. Shoot, man, dare I say fire pigs. Right. <laughs>
the aggression, uh, you saw the combinations, you saw the pressure. Uh, and at the end of the day, man, as we always say, cardio is key. Not only that, though, body work is key. Not only that, pacing is key. Uh, both of these guys had skills and they put it on display. Street Beef Scrapyard, FNF Louis versus Kal El, firefight. Yeah, you see it. We we back in the West Coast. Uh, Smokey versus Buzzkill. Another competitive, uh, highly skilled match. Um, these guys, they went out there and they matched each other's energy. Uh, we saw the endurance. We saw the mental toughness. Uh, and this is uh, something I'd like to say more or less like a puncher versus a boxer uh, as far as the styles. Uh, comment who you thought won in this fight because this was very close. Street Beast West Coast, Smokey versus Buzzkill, Firefight. Yeah. Taking you back to Street Beast Scrapyard. You see it. If you're trying to look this fight up, you're going to have to put in who's going to challenge him after this on the Street, Street Beef Scrapyard channel. This is our guest tonight, El Guanaco versus Island Punch. Phenomenal heavyweight boxing. Uh, these guys, <laughs> once again, they went for each other's necks. Uh, we saw power shot after power shot. Uh, we got a lot of great back and forth moments. And uh, we got a shocking ending. Because once again, cardio is key. Uh, and patience is key. Phenomenal fight. Street View Scrapyard, Island Punch versus El Guanaco. And lastly, taking you back to Street Beef's West Coast, another heavyweight boxing match, Doughboy versus Tailed Beast. Man, these guys put on a show uh, all three rounds. Uh, man, competitive boxing here. Uh, these guys got straight to business. They were not shy. Uh, great energy, great pace, uh, great back and forth. Uh, a, a lot of pressure, uh, a lot of patience. And uh, we got beautiful counters uh, throughout this match. And uh, a little bit of brawling, a little bit of brawling, you know, uh, a, a good mix of everything you want to see in a firefight. Street Beast West Coast, Doughboy versus Tailed Beast, Sam K and the Firefight. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. That was a fire fire for sure. I liked all those fights. <laughs> yeah, man. Great, great fights, man. Yeah, I agree with you, Anomaly. We appreciate you, man. Yeah, man. Shit. Another phenomenal show, man. It was, but, you know, it's about that time. What do you say? About that time, man. Uh, another great conversation. Great guests. Uh, let's go ahead and get through the shout outs. Uh, first and foremost, got to give a great shout out to Anomaly. Got to give a shout out to El Guanaco. We appreciate you guys and your time. Uh, for the people in the comment section watching us on replay, uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, Buddy V, we do this every week. We kill it. I appreciate you, man. Uh, Jay in the background, psh, always killing it. Uh, our special guest, Fire Chicken, much appreciated. That was fire introduction, fire premiere, much appreciated. Uh, Street Beef's OG Yard, Street Beef's Scrap Yard, Street Beef's West Coast, Street Beef's Dirty South. We do this for y'all. Appreciate y'all. And uh, yeah, don't do the social media if you're trying to catch me here every time, every week. Same channel. And uh, yeah, man. Shout out Overtime Hustle Magazine. Shout out Zwell World. Shout out Heart in the Fight. And that's it for me. You guys have a great night. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, last. Yeah, shout out to Zwell. Zwell world.com is the website. You know, that's where you want to go to get all that fun, good time yeah. merch. Zwell underscore buddy V's the Instagram for yeah. fun times too. 
Um, yeah, you know you want to go support. I don't know why, you know, you should be supporting. Come on now. You know you want to support, have a good time. I hit actually that like have, button. Uh, hit that like button. Right, hit the like button. Like, subscribe, notification bell. <laughs> and with that being said, yeah, thank you, Sarmke. Thank you, Jay. It's always a fun time. Highlight of my Tuesday, highlight of my week. I get excited every time. I get my office ready. I'm like, yeah. As you see. Oh. So with that being said, you know, we keep it short and simple, brief. No more to Jay. One world, one love, deuces. Hey, hey, hey. Hey.